I really appreciate the comments that you folks put in my videos as it guides me to make content that interests you all. So several people have asked this question. How can we remove Google from our standard Android phones? Some have asked me specifically which files they can change or delete on a Google Android using tools like ADB, which is the software used to access the file system on these phones. This is actually a complicated topic. My response to those that have asked me this is that it is impossible to remove Google from an existing Google Android phone while keeping the same operating system. Yes, it is possible to remove Google by changing the operating system. And this is not universally true of all models, just those that allow this. This could also influence your choice of phones if you plan on possibly allowing a different OS to be installed at a later time. In any case, the people asking this are wondering why it is impossible to remove files from the existing Android OS. They wonder if this results in some loss of function or worse. I will explain all this and why it is the way it is. You will also learn why the alternative on some Android phones is to change the OS version of Android, meaning you completely wipe the OS and put a new one on it. This you can do and it is the only realistic option to remove Google. Stay right there and we will get into the nuts and bolts of this from a technical level. To make it absolutely clear from the outset, it is not possible to remove Apple from an iPhone. So there will be no video trying to explain that. To remove Apple and get away from Apple having the ability to scan content on your phone, sell your iPhone. But let's get back to Google Androids. I define a Google Android as a standard Android phone model sold by Google partners or Google itself like the Samsungs. Motorola's, LG's, or Google Pixels. The other companies, by the way, have a contract with Google itself, which allows or actually obligates them to install Google apps on their phones. And this is the largest population of phones I want to focus on today. Yes, these phones come with Google apps. Could you just remove the Google apps and then make them safe from Google spyware? Let's start the explanation by introducing you to the Android Open Source Project or AOSP. AOSP was started by Google as an open source project back in 2007, around the time that the iPhone was released. The original source code was actually purchased from the original company that made Android and this became a part of Google. In order to quickly get market share, the source code was made open source and many companies joined the project, primarily the makers of the hardware. Google itself focused on the user interface or UI of the Android and the other companies like Samsung, LG, HTC, Motorola and others focused on device drivers to make sure their phone hardware is compatible. This kind of partnership expanded the reach of Android dramatically and many companies then began including Android as their standard OS. Today, most phones sold around the world are based on Android, which currently has a 71% market share. Though in the US, iOS has a 56% market share. So this is kind of strange, but all Android phones are based on an open source operating system. Whenever a new Android version comes out, or whenever phone OEMs want to test out a new model, they can use the Android Open Source Project code or AOSP to make sure everything works. And as I said, these other companies contribute code, particularly on hardware, to the open source project. So this testing has to always occur. If Samsung wants to test out a new foldable screen, then it will incorporate a new device driver for that in the open source, and then they can test it. But here's the part that's not completely understood. If they are to market the product, then they are obligated to include not just the original AOSP, but to overlay Google's own version of Android over AOSP. And this includes all the standard Google apps. So the basic UI of Android is all tested out in the open source stage. 
but the proprietary code of Google is never revealed in the Android open source. It is instead done by replacement. So the final version of Google Android replaces many of the programs that were originally in the open source. If you're a programmer, you can understand how this gets more complicated. In coding, there are shared programs in modules called libraries. Any program that uses certain modules are bound to use certain libraries as dependencies, meaning they don't run if certain portions of the code are missing. And that's the complication with the Google Apps overlay over Android open source. They replace so much of the OS and the OS itself is tied to the new additional code that experimenting with replacing a file here or there is just not going to cut it. You will be faced with missing dependencies and then the OS won't run. Android open source project itself is made to run completely by itself without any external connection to Google. This of course is essential for the testing by OEMs and allows Google to independently develop their own apps without timing it to whatever the OEMs might do. So this is the actual process of releasing a regular Android phone. First, the OEM installs Android Open Source Project on the phone. Then they add their own proprietary apps and system code to Android. And finally over this, they overlay the Google code known as GAPS or GAPS. Like I said, it is not possible to undo gaps once you install it since it is based on replacement of files. And there are so many files. But all the secret Google code to do things like 24-7 location tracking, app telemetry, logging into Google with your Google ID, contact tracing, Wi-Fi triangulation, and so on are included in this gaps installation. What is not available is the source code to gaps. Google was smart enough not to include this in the Android open source project where they are obligated to make the code open. For privacy conscious people, we want to remove all the privacy invading code that Google puts into the phone. But it is not possible to do that after the fact without making the OS break. Now as I implied, you can use the phone with just the first two steps of a phone release install Android open source project on the phone and then add the proprietary code that is installed by the manufacturer, if any, and then the phone will work. The phone will not have Google yet since the last step installing gaps has not occurred. This is the condition which we have been calling a de-Google phone. No, we haven't actually removed Google from the phone, so the name is inaccurate. What we've done here is not to take the extra step to install Google at all. There are consequences to not having gaps installed. The bad consequences, bad for some, is that there is no Google Play Store and none of the regular Google apps will work, such as Gmail, YouTube, Google Earth, Google Maps, Google Drive. You have to find replacements for these. Ways can be made to work even though it is owned by Google. In general, the other bad consequence is that some proportion of apps will not work. I'm going to guess around 10%. The reason they don't work is typically because there is no Google payment system for apps that require payment. And some are fully dependent on some Google feature like Google Maps. And some apps like Uber and Lyft want to track your location and without gaps, this is limited. Now, there are very good consequences with not having gaps. 90% of the regular apps do work fine. I use common apps like Spotify, Kindle, Netflix, Prime Video, Waze, to name a few. I found substitutes for Google Apps. The best consequence of a de-Google phone is that it does not have a Google ID associated with it. The phone does not have any code that reports itself to Google HQ. So for the most part, the phone does not identify itself to Google. Fortunately also, Android itself introduced features since Android 9 to disallow any application that's not part of AOSP to communicate the IMEI, the MZ, MAC addresses, and other identities to an external party, including Google itself. Google can get around this when GAPS is installed since they are system-level apps and are created with this access. 
Similarly, things like location tracking of Google IDs are built into GAPS but do not exist before GAPS. This makes any phone running Android open source project pretty much Google spyware free. This is not 100% though, as there is some code that communicates with Google on AOSP related to the GPS called SUPL, S-U-P-L. And this is something I explained in my GPS video. It doesn't identify the phone, but it is able to track phones to the nearest cell tower. Though, of course, there can be no Google ID associated with that. Anyway, you can learn about that in the recent GPS video. Now, this configuration is not perfection here. The problem is that the OEM phone maker still has the ability to put their own code into the phone and overlay that on top of AOSP. This code is typically not open source, so if the phone maker is not trustworthy, it would behoove you to be aware of this. Not all AOSP phones are the same. For example, we have our own open source Brax2 phones, which is based off AOSP. It is not only open source, but you can use ADB to explore the file system and see everything in there. In contrast, some phone makers will lock access to the file system. An example of this is Huawei. This is why it is hard to trust Huawei when they deliberately lock the system from external view. So though phones like a Google Pixel has code from Google itself to provide built-in drivers for the device and to make a Pixel work, these files are not hidden in a Google Pixel. The key here is a feature on certain phones that are enabled by the OEM. It is called OEM Unlock. If a phone is OEM unlockable, then you have access to the file system and you can replace the OS code in there. If a phone is not OEM unlockable, then you cannot alter the OS in, in any way unless provided as an update by the manufacturer. Now, Google Pixels themselves are a very strange beast. If you buy a Google Pixel from the Google Store, they come naturally as OEM unlockable. But if you buy that phone from a US carrier like Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile, the phones are locked and they can also include other code that the carrier may overlay on the operating system. These cannot be changed. Therefore, if you're buying a phone, if you want the capability of future installation of a different OS like AOSP, you should get a phone that is OEM unlockable, meaning don't buy from carriers. Currently, this list is limited. Pixels from the Google Store, Motorola's, some international Samsung's, some LG's, many Chinese brands like OnePlus or Oppo. The rest are locked. Just as an aside, because OEM unlocking increases the usefulness of the shelf life of a phone, it is certain to increase the resale value. So certain models like Google Store Pixels are very easy to resell. So even when you haven't decided to go the de Google phone route, the choice of phone may be important. In general, I have found that Samsung's LG's are phones to avoid for this. They have no future compatibility. In general, Motorola's and OnePlus are almost always OEM unlockable, but many models are not supported by an AOSB OS. The Pixels are the most flexible of all for OEM unlocking and has the best AOSB OS support, which is strange since they are made specifically for Google, I believe by HTC, or Samsung now makes the new Tensor models. In summary, the reality is that most of the Android phones you own cannot be modified in any way, the main exception being 50% of Google Pixels. The only way to remove Google from a device is to replace the OS with AOSP plus the OEM code, but skip the installation of GAPS. There are many makers of AOSP forked OSs. We have Brax OS, for example, open source and based off AOSP directly. This OS is designed specifically for the Brax model phones. Another common one and likely the most popular is Lineage OS. And another that I've been using on Pixels is Calyx OS. There are many others and my general opinion is that all are good for eliminating Google. Some are more user friendly than others. All up to you to choose. Folks, my company creates products 
that are intended to protect our privacy. We provide phones that have no centralized control and are invisible to big tech. Our most popular device is the Brax2 phone running Brax OS. We also have Pixel phones that have Google removed. These are called the Google phones. We have a VPN service, Bytes VPN, which is a stealth VPN in that it doesn't scream that you're on a VPN. We do not put thousands of you on a single server. We have Braxmail, which eliminates the metadata from your emails. This means no IP addresses and traces on your email that show where it came from. All these products are on the store on my app, Braxme. Come visit us there. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.